So Garmin has just dropped a massive slate of new features for the Garmin 400 955 and 955 Solar, as well as a bunch of features for the 400 255, and then there's more news for the Garmin 400 265 and 965 a little bit later on in the video. Now I'm going to run through all these features here in just a second, but I want to note one really important thing. Uh, today and tomorrow is Amazon Prime Day. I've got an entire video on in the corner there. However, when I did that video, the 955 Solar wasn't on sale. Now it is on sale. It's 90 bucks off, which is basically the same price as a non-solar version. A link down at the bottom there, but uh, that is a fantastic deal for this watch and something to keep in mind. Uh, now, to get started, this is technically a beta program update, but it's actually a release candidate, which means that it's better than the usual stinky beta. It's almost production, uh, so you're probably pretty confident in most things, but if you're doing like an Ironman race this weekend, I wouldn't necessarily jump on it. To get your watch enrolled in the beta, it's really easy. On the Garmin Connect website, upper right-hand corner, you'll go ahead and choose devices, choose a 955 or 955 Solar, or any Garmin device that you want to enroll for that matter, and then choose to enroll in the beta program. From there, go onto the watch, go into settings, and down to software updates, and then go ahead and check for software updates. It'll take a couple seconds, it'll connect to Wi-Fi, and pull it on that update. You will need to choose the install now button though to install it, and that takes generally like two to three minutes, and then you're basically done. So the main thing here is that all the new Garmin Phoenix 7 Pro and Epix Pro features are now on the 955. Now I know a lot of you are like, well, aren't they on the Phoenix 7 and Epix themselves yet, the non-pro editions? And those are coming soon as well. Sometimes the Forerunner team gets done first, sometimes it's the Phoenix and Outdoor team that gets done first. Today it's just the Forerunner. I would expect those updates for the Phoenix 7 and Epix non-pro editions to show up like any day now, maybe even today or tomorrow or something like that, maybe next week, really, really soon. So I wouldn't really worry too much about that. So the first two big metrics are the addition of endurance score and hill score. Uh, now, both of these metrics do require some data behind them. Uh, in the case of endurance score, it's looking at the last 90 days worth of data. In the case of hill score, the same is true, but it does require two weeks of running up hills. Uh, so it has to be running or hiking or uh, some sort of pedestrian activity. It is not for cycling. Uh, and it doesn't have to be fast up hills. It can be slow if you want to, because that's one of the two components of your hill score. Now in the Epix Probe years ago that I just published last week, I go into all these new features uh, in extreme depth they're the exact same on this watch as that. So if you want to understand how they all work in real life over the course of many months of usage, you can check out that video linked in the corner there. It's even like chapter bookmark, so it's really easy to find hill score and endurance score and weather widget and all that kind of goodness there. Now, one quirk that I did notice is that the endurance score on the 455 did not match to what I have on the Epix Pro. It's low by a whole lot. Uh, and I don't entirely know why. Uh, I do know that Garmin has said in the past that neither endurance score nor hill score are taking advantage of the unified training status uh, system System yet, meaning they won't sync automatically between things. Some of the stuff is showing up here, but it's like just all lobes, which seems weird to me. Hill score is just simply not populated at all. Hopefully at some point Garmin will address that and make it part of the whole unified thing they spent all this time doing over the past year. Next up on the list, they've added new map types. Uh, these are the basically split screen and data field map options that were added again to the Epix Pro and Phoenix 7 Pro. They're now in the forward. That's a cool, nice little addition. Just makes it a little easier to have more data fields on your map pages. After that, we got another biggie, which is the addition of the weather radar overlays. So here you can see weather radar overlays for precipitation, for heat, uh, for uh, wind, and so on. Uh, these are all accessed through the weather widget though. They are not accessed via like your normal navigation and routing pages in a sport activity profile. So if you have a route open on a map page there, you won't see them there. You have to go into the weather widget and access them that way. Still, they can be kind of useful. One thing that's not in the 955 yet, though, is the quick access control panel. On the Epix Pro and Phoenix 7 Pro, you can long hold the lower right hand button and quickly go between the different widgets. That makes it really easy to get to that weather widget from within a workout or some sort of, you know, course following activity. That's not here yet on the 955 or 965, so just keep that in mind. Next, they've added new muscle maps to hit cardio and Pilates activities, something that started on the venue line, I think was in some of the recent Epix units as well, uh, and now is on the 955 too. Uh, in addition, they've added a new workouts app. Uh, so think about this as an app that shows all of your structured workouts, whether the ones that are scheduled coming up or previously used that you've downloaded to the watch. So you used to be able to access this via the training menu and you can still do that, but this allows you to add a workouts activity in the same way that you would add run or bike, etc. but to show all of your workouts, all your structured workouts for all your sport types in one little place. And then we got two more quick ones before the big slate of new ones, uh, which is they've added notification watch face data fields, uh, the ability for those to display name and number, um, I have no idea what that's for and I can't find any details on it. And number two, they've added new DI2 cassette types. Uh, so that's just in there for DI2 shifting and displaying that data in there. 
But the big one, the one that adds like two dozen items to this list here by itself is a whole slate of new sport profiles. And you can see those on the screen right down below there. Those are all just the new ones. Uh, and the core thing to understand here is up until now, Garmin primarily made sport profiles when they had custom or unique data to show for that sport profile. So think of like downhill skiing. They would show your downhill skiing runs. They would automatically classify those and do all sorts of cool stuff there. The same is true of mountain bike. They would show grit and flow and other metrics related to that. Uh, for water skiing, they would show a number of runs you had and the max speed per run and they would do all this kind of fancy data versus a lot of other companies and their watches, they would create all these extra sport profiles that were essentially just showing your like heart rate and speed and that's it. But those were used for classification and categorization after the fact. So uh, ice skating is a great example of that. Uh, in the case of Garmin, they never had an ice skating profile, but Sunto and Polo and others did. And so if I wanted to go ice skating on a Garmin watch, I had to choose like, something else like cycling, which wasn't a big deal. It showed me basically the same data, but like categorization wise, it messed up all my stats behind the scenes. Now that's solved. Now you can do that for categorization purposes. Garmin says down the road, they're gonna look at which sport profiles people are using of these new sets and then expand the data in detail within those sport profiles to kind of the normal higher Garmin level, which I think that makes sense. To me, that's a fair compromise. Now, as for the 400 255, uh, it's not getting the hill score and endurance score and that kind of stuff. You can see the list of features right now on the screen that it is getting. Uh, it is getting a bunch of sport profiles, but there's a few that it's not including. So here's a list of those new sport profiles on the 255. So what about the 265 and the 965? Uh, well, those units are just a few days behind Garmin says, uh, and so they're slated for early next week for the beta drops of those, uh, and they're gonna mirror exactly the 255 and the 955 feature sets or the feature ads there. Uh, so anything that the 255 got, the 265 is gonna get, and anything the 955 got, the 965 is gonna get. And then again, remember, as I said earlier on, expect the Epix and Phoenix 7 betas uh, for all those same features coming from the Epix Pro and Phoenix 7 Pro uh, to end up on the Epix and Phoenix 7 watches in beta, uh, likely in the next few days or a few weeks at worst. Uh, Garmin had targeted those for production by the end of summer, and so typically speaking, that means roughly mid-July for those beta updates. And seeing we just saw the 955 today, we'll probably see the whole lot of them here in the next few days. Uh, anyways, if you found this video interesting or useful, go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom there, or subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. It's gonna be a busy week. Have a good one.